here at Mount Sinai, over the last couple of decades, we've realized that we have to more comprehensively understand the role of multiple environmental factors that are affecting health. And that's what exposomics is, measuring multiple environmental factors that contribute to health. To be honest, the growth in exposomics has been relatively slow. There wasn't a lot of emphasis on it for the first 10 years. There is a greater interest in it now than there was 15 to 20 years ago. So the mission of the Institute for Climate Change, Environmental Health, and Exposomics here at Mount Sinai is really to bring teams of scientists together because if you want to measure more and more of it, you need very much broad expertise to do so. None of us have singularly the expertise to do it all. Our health is not getting better. In fact, our health is getting worse as a society. The environment is playing a very key role, and it's something that we really haven't invested in until recently. But if we make that investment, we're going to start to understand why diseases occur. And then once we understand why they occur, we can both prevent them, but also treat them better. When we study the environment, one of the biggest challenges facing us is that the environment is dynamic, it's constantly changing. Unlike our base genomic sequence, which is static, and we can measure that almost at any point in our lifetime, the environment must be measured repeatedly over time. So we've started developing tools that focus on the time dimension. For example, for many years we used shed baby teeth. They are a very interesting matrix because they have growth rings in them just like trees. And as you map along those growth rings, you can go back into a person's history, even to their fetal development. Recently, we have transitioned that method to analyzing a single strand of hair. Similar to teeth, a single strand of hair has growth rings in them, and we can use lasers to map at a very fine resolution, something like a four hourly resolution, and figure out what was happening in that person's body, what was happening to their metabolism in their recent past. This provides a powerful tool to look at the dynamic aspects of our environment, which are now helping us develop biomarkers for conditions where previously there were no tests, for example, autism spectrum disorder or Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as ALS. So it is such innovation that is very much needed to bring the environment into precision medicine, and that's been one of the key focuses of our institute. I am a pediatrician with the Children's Environmental Health team here, um, and I also work with the Community Engagement Team um, for the Exposomic Institute. And what that is, is a multidisciplinary team that works to make sure that the cutting edge science that's coming out of Mount Sinai is translated into action. The most effective interventions are actually policy change. That prescribes the need to change for everyone. And so, if you apply an environmental justice lens to interventions, then what you're doing is you're making sure that those interventions are reaching the families and communities that need it most, and the families and communities that have been most harmed by environmental injustices. And I think that we together, not only here at Mount Sinai, but as a larger environmental health community, are truly committed to righting past wrongs. Uh, welcome. The mission of the Exposomic Symposium, which we've run over the last eight years, um, has been to engage researchers, clinicians, practitioners across the globe, really, not just here in Manhattan, um, to tackle this issue. And when you think about it for climate change and the, the global effects on the different environmental factors that we're all going to be facing and causing health outcomes, um, we really need to come together on this. Each one of our symposia touch on the importance of environmental justice for understanding health disparities. Why is it not uniform in how it affects uh, health of different populations? Why is it tracking with socioeconomic status? So we try to keep that in the forefront. Exposomics is constantly evolving itself, and so we're going to have to keep up with trends, and in many ways we're going to be leading the field, but in other areas we're going to try to keep up with what others are doing. And so if we work together, I think we can actually make this field grow much faster. 